Okay, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Now today, it's gonna to be a smoke-filled landscape. Middle of Australia, Victoria, as you would have heard by now, there's been absolutely tons of bushfires all over the country. Thankfully, I'm not in amongst it, fairly close, but still quite safe, which is great. Now what we're gonna to do today is try and capture that beautiful smoke haze. Now there can be an interesting effect achieved, been studying it a fair bit recently, as you can imagine, and uh, there's plenty of uh, variety in the colours. It seems to be that the shadows tend to go a little bit bluer with the smoke haze, and the light source tends to go a little bit more orange. And that combination together can make for beautiful compositions. So even though it's very tragic what's happening with the fires, there's always beauty in everything. So what we're gonna do today is Try and capture that haze, try and capture that smoke haze and have a light filled painting at the same time. All right, let's have a look around. All right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here again, and welcome back. Middle of summer, central Victoria, Australia. Now, as you would have heard by now on the news, there's been plenty of bushfires around. There's none right here, thankfully, but as you can see out in the horizon, there's a smoke haze everywhere you look. Now, what's going on here is high noon, we've got almost the middle of the day, summer. So we've got that beautiful Australian light, but a little different with that smoke haze, it's creating something quite interesting. What it's doing is it's, for one, it's developing an exaggeration 3D as it recedes off into the distance. At the same time, it's creating a nice contrast between the sunlight and the shadows. The shadows seem to be going a bluer color and the sunlight seems to be a bit more of a golden orange, which gives you that warm and cool orange and blue contrast. Okay, now today, I'm painting on a big board. Got heaps of palette knives, I mean, sorry, got big palette knives. I'll use a little bit of brush and I've got buckets of oil paint. All right, well, as usual, I've just blocked in a few of the darks just to get me started, to get the feel of the tonal recession, just to warm up a bit. And now I'll go for the biggest differences between what I've got here and what we've got out there. All right, let's have a look. Okay, now I think that middle ground is dropping off very quickly, so I'll mix up a color for that. It's very blue today. So I'm going to use a ultramarine blue with some titanium white and magenta. Give it that kind of purple color. This is just to put a few shadows in. I'll stick them all in between the foreground, the foreground trees. It doesn't matter if you do too many because you put the lights on over the top of that and that'll be fine. Okay, a bit more permanent magenta, and a bit more ultramarine blue. Stick them wherever you reckon they look right, which is quite a lot of spots at the moment. <laughs> I'll just mix up a bit more. Ultramarine blue, magenta, a little bit of Viridian green and white for the foliage, maybe thrown in here and there. I'll get into more of that in a minute. <clears throat> it's receding up very quickly. There's a lot of white going in as it goes back. Okay, a bit of Viridian green, burnt sienna and white over here. Slightly different mix. Let's just have a look. A bit more green. Now I'll half mix that with that blue colour. See what that gives me. Just gives me a slight foliage colour on top of those blue shadows. So you've got the blue, but at the same time, you've got the green. And that's kind of what we're seeing out there. I've got to realize it's quickly quickly receding so keep adding white a lot more than i normally would and blue a 
This is fun as usual. Getting back out in the bush and painting is always great fun. Absolutely love doing it. And I'm sure you all do too. Right, so a bit more white and blue. Lighten that tone. It's fading off almost into nothing as it goes back here. I've just put a couple of marks there just to get me in a horizon. I can hardly actually see the horizon there. Well, I can't, but I still wanted to keep the painting level. So I've just kind of given myself a bit of an idea where level is. And then I can work with that. That's about it. I'll just stand back and see if I have actually got a level. Looks pretty good to me. All right. Bit of paper towel. What will be the next biggest difference, I reckon? Let's just get some of that sky and that beautiful smoke haze. What a different colour is today. Now, I reckon there's a lot of burnt sienna in that, so will be burnt sienna and white. Throw plenty in, particularly plenty of white. If I run out of white, it won't matter. I've got tons of it in big tins, so that's great. You can see that I'm gonna have to put more and more white. It just needs to be that light tone. Check out that chunky, beautiful paint. Isn't it lovely stuff? Look at that, man. Look at that. All right. You can also see there's a bit of yellow ochre with it. It's just not straight burnt sienna. It's got a more of a golden colour, so I'll just add a bit of that. I can hear a truck in the distance, I don't know if you can hear that. Let's just see what I've got. Yeah, that's a bit too pink, so the burnt end is making it a little bit too pink, so more yellow ochre. Just adjust it as you go. I'm going to have to use more white if I'm using more yellow ochre. those lines. Get all that in. Not quite touching the trees too much at the moment. The trees are such a dark tone. If you go touching them now you just make a lot of smudge. A lot of that colour, so I'll get it in a bit more yellow over and white. And I need plenty of white, I can see that now. Chunk it all in. All different marks going different ways. Now I've just got the bottom and the top with a bit of tape on it and that's not for anything that's just so it's nice and neat when I try and get it in the trailer I'll just peel that tape off be able to slide it into the box when I get home and it's dry I'll just get the saw out and cut that off so there won't actually be any white in the painting down below or on top it's just for all me practical reasons for me right now as I'm painting okay a bit more on there we go look at that look at that Bring it down to wherever we reckon this horizon's gonna be today. I think it's gonna be here today. Yeah, not bad, okay. Throw a bit of yellow ochre right into that mix, really pump it up now. Just get a bit of this in while I'm here. I've got plenty of these yellow ochre colors. out a few things as I'm going now. Alright. Just give me an idea, trying to get everything in all at once and work out what I've done wrong later. <laughs> so that'll be somewhere where the rock is. Some nice granite boulders, I'm just trying to imagine where they're going. I've got the underpainting there so I can sort of go with that. I'll stand back and have a look. Gonna get some magenta, mix it with that white and blue, and make a really pale colour over here of ultramarine blue, magenta, and white. Let's see what I've got here. Do 
just going to half mix it with this colour and that'll knock the grass back. Make more of those the grass colours in the distance there. So it's a keyed down version. Needs a bit more blue, I think. A bit more white to lighten the tone. It's really knocked it down. Let's have a look. It's good, but I think it's got to be a bit more blue. It's got a bit too much red in it from the magenta. Just adjust it as you go. Just got to work out where I actually want these patches of grass to be. It should be very much building up the composition of where I want it to go. Your grass in there won't hurt anyone. Nice patch over here, maybe. There we go, put that in there. Right, 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 right. A bit more white. Weaken it off even more as I go back so it's got more of the whites and more of the blues and less of the yellow ochres. Jet plane going overhead, I can hear. Yeah, that's not that colour right back. Into the smoke haze distance. Fantastic, just what we want. Compose the picture in my head as I'm going. Doing the voiceover. It's a bit of fun trying to do the both at once, I'll tell you that much. Trying to do a voiceover and compose and paint a picture. Great fun. A bit too much pink in that from the magenta, so we'll go with the blue to knock it back. Whites. Plenty of paint on the board at the moment. Now what I'm going to do is get some of this grey kind of thing that I've mixed up here and actually intermix it. Let's have a look. Whiter, bluer. I've got a uh, lot more white in the mix. Just mixing it over the top of this yellow ochre colour to knock it back a bit. I'll get the brush out in a minute and I'll actually mix the two together and blend them. Pull that through. Come down close. Keep that clean, don't want too much of that dark colour from the, this tree here touching. And I've got that. Now I'll get some cleaner blue, so I'm going to go for the ultramarine. Much cleaner blue as you get up high, it's hard to see, but the sky is actually getting much cleaner, much more like a classic blue day the higher you go. So there's less smoke between your eyes and the sky looking that way. So I will put some of that in. I won't make it as dark as normal because it's not. It's all hazed out today. But it's still there, so stick it in. Huh, hang a sec. Just move this. Take that off for a second if I can. Get it out of the way so I can paint this corner. And now I've got to remember to put it back because I tell you, those gusts of wind can really knock the painting off when you're not ready for it and put it on the ground, and that's something we do not want. Right, now what I'll do is I'll get a brush and we'll just sort of mix it together and see what happens.
go for a fairly big brush so we can get a real nice broad effect and later on we may refine with some small stuff but going for the big impression at the moment. Right, so just blend this, get rid of this horizon a bit, blend it together. So you can't tell where it starts and where it finishes. Keep blending here, blending there. Lovely effect. Keep that horizon very smeared in. It's uh, very hard to see what's going on out there, but it's I'm up on top of a big hill. It's a lot of distance under normal conditions with a very flat horizon. It's nothing, so I'm keeping that horizon quite flat. Get the lumps and bumps, maybe. beauty about painting on site, painting plain air, every day is a different day. So, one day you've got perfectly clear skies, other days you've got bushfire haze. Actually, we seem to have a lot of bushfire haze at the moment, but that's not always the case. It's just been a particularly rough, rough season. So there you go. Have a look what we've got, eh? Alright, that's alright now. It was the same brush. I'll just start bringing all this stuff together a bit. Just pull them together. with all sorts of marks. I'm starting off with long horizontal marks because I'm just trying to get that distance effect. The closer I get to the foreground, the more I'll start working this way as well as just that way. It also breaks up the subject, stops the subject just being too slick, kind of gives it a good variety. We're getting there, we're getting there. Thrash some of this grass around, shall we? Well, we've got the brush in our hand. Just put a bit in, actually. Let's just get something better than that. All right, a bit of that granite rock. We'll use some brown with those blues and greens. It's got a lot of lichen and moss growing on those rocks. So, even though the rocks are kind of a grey colour, there's a lot of pale green lichens and stuff. So I'll mix up a bit of a pale green color here with yellow ochre, viridian green, a bit of white and stuff like that. Half mix it with my rocks and whatever. Granite rocks shutting out here and there's a bit more orange in them too. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm missing out on a bit of yellow, I'm gonna get some. Right. If I can get a lid off, oh, here we go. Yellow, a tiny bit of cad red. What I'll do is I'll just mix up a bit of that yellow, a little bit of that red, make a really nice orange. I always like a bit of orange and there's a bit out there, so don't let that go to waste. 
the white to lighten the tone a bit. So now when I make up yellow ochres and burnt siennas, throw a bit of that in, it really twangs it up a bit. those tones just a bit of orange here and there so I'm just breaking it into the subject make a beauty of a brew there we go look at that some right here in the foreground I was gonna bring that up just a little bit out there not too much Half mix those colours to get some rainbow greens from the lichen on the rocks. Burying the brush marks. Plenty of variety in the foreground, a bit more burnt sienna to darken the foreground a bit. a bit. Darker and richer down here, so I'll put a little bit of that in. Foreground grass with yellow ochre and white. And flies. Half mix. Just pulling some upward marks like that to give the feeling of grass as it grows upwards. Up. I've already got the shadow colour of the final ridge. I'm going to make up the light so I'll on top of it. Uh, what have we got? Yellow ochre. Pretty and green, bit of burnt sienna. touch leaving the blues coming through just lightly touching indeed right that's more green in that to lighten it
All right, so the colors there of these uh, trees, but what I'm gonna do is just get it with a clean palette knife and just pull through to kind of blend them together, if you like, wipe it clean. Just to soften, I'm gonna need some more paper towel. So you just like pull through, wipe very clean. Random marks here and there. Kind of blends everything together. Makes it look more natural. And you vary the angles as you go. Bit of this, bit of that, clean knife. Wipe clean. Have a look what we got. All right, so that softened that foliage nicely. Now I'm going to get some of these subtle colours of the distant blue smoke haze in there. Let's do that right. So, ultramarine blue, magenta, white. Like I said earlier, I'll mix up. Like I said earlier, I'll mix up a foliage colour as well for that distance. So I'm going to use Viridian Green, a few burnt siennas and whatever. If I half mix that in, we get a mixture of both. So you can do them at once. You can do the light sauce and the dark sauce all in one palette knife mask. Save a bit of time and make the paint look fresher. Now it's just about putting trees where you want them, composing the picture, we've already got the trees in the underpainting and uh, this will help freshen all that and bring it back and get it all off and if I want I can also scrape back and get the paint from underneath, so I may do as well. Occasional loose tree. You got the main chunks of the trees, and then you got little trees out by himself. Goes off into the distance, and as it goes off into the distance, of course, there's more blue from the smoke. Naturally, there'd be more blue anyway, but today it's exaggerated. And becomes more lateral as it goes off. Everything here is more angled. The further it goes out, the flatter it gets as you get closer to the uh, tipping off the edge of the earth. Alright, stand back and have a look. Eh? Burying the marks all the time. Okay, now what have we got here? It's working on that granite rock. Mix in a few colours to get the nice rainbow effect.
bit of red hair. Just out here somewhere. Magenta half mix it with those browns. Right, 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 right. Clean the knife and uh, Get some lovely grass going again. A little bit thicker this time. I really want the foreground to pop, so I'm going to exaggerate that grass thick foreground and thin distance to make the distance we see. Neaten a few of these things in the distance. Very delicately. Okay. Put this one down. Swap to the smaller knife for this job. Now I might just, like I did with the foliage here, I did a bit of pull through to soften and make it blend. Just pull through a bit here and there, change the angle here and there to soften and blend. Keep the variety. Some of these subtle distant tones again. It's a bit browner than that, so we just put a bit more brown in. Like so. Get 
some of that grassy stuff again with the yellow ochre and the white. Slightly pick out the edge of that rock. brush is a bit stiff, it hasn't been used for a while because I don't use brushes all the time. I went to use it then and she's all soften her up a bit. There you go. Get the paint off. Just get a variety of marks. Sometimes they'll be brush, sometimes they'll be knife. I'm doing random marks, not all the same. find some of that original sky color that would come in handy because uh, I need some. <laughs> it's good to mix it. It's good to have it so you don't have to mix it again. Just want to pull that down, straighten that horizon a little bit. Just keep blending and changing things as you go until you feel it's correct how you want it. Putting a bit more variety in the marks. A bit more blending. bit more of the browns and less of the yellows. I've got a bit too much yellow ochre in that.
by now. Ultramarine bull, uh, ultramarine, yeah, ultramarine, <laughs> ultramarine blue and magenta. Got it right eventually, right? Got the colours right. Okay, there we go now. Tiniest bit of green with that. Just to get that foliage colour like I was saying earlier. Some of these things got a bit lost with the softening effect. Trying to make it a little bit richer in that middle ground than it was, but not too rich. Just simplifying and abstracting a little bit. Now what I do, might do is, uh, I've just painted, there's a couple of little buildings in the distance there. I'll put them in for a bit of interest. Do that before we go any further, because you're always got to go for the biggest impression and you put in what's the most obvious first. Now that I've got a lot of that in, I reckon I'll go for what's the next obvious we'll see that, that little building. Alright. Quite a blue colour today. What have we got? It's very white, obviously. White with a... Here we go, ultramarine blue. Slightly lighter tone than that. And I'll just stand back for a sec. Yeah, that's all right. Just suggesting the rooftops. Is I get the paint and take some of the bottom off with the palette knife, you can pull it back up to straighten that edge. Put the shadow under it, brings the shadow back to the underside of the roof, gives you that beautiful clean mark like the edge of a roof in shadow. There's a few buildings there, a few other little marks and things. Another little building out here for interest. Square the roof up, wipe the knife clean each time if you can find a piece of clean towel. Yeah, right, that's working, that's working good. That's the good thing about working on board, it's so smooth the surface that it's very easy to put the paint on and then scrape it off with a palette knife and get that clean under edge of a building rooftop or something like that. Be 
buildings in there. Scrape it up. Scrape it up too much, so I'll put some more in. When you have a close look, there's quite a few of these little buildings and they do add interest, so I'm going to stick them in. Country Victoria has plenty of little farm buildings here and there. Just taking a bit of paint off there. It's amazing what how it works when you take paint off to the underpainting. You can really start to bring things to life. You just get rid of that bug right here that's landed on it. Whoop, nearly wore it. Alright, we'll have another look. So we'll go for some dark tones. What do we got here? A bit of red and green to build up a really dark tone. Might actually go for the old uh, ultramarine blue and magenta. That makes a nice dark purple. Just going to put a few of the shadows that the rocks are casting here and there. There's some really dark ones and that'll really bring the sunlight out in this hazy atmosphere. Quite dark trunks here and there. So I'll we'll stick them in. Just stick one in here. So I just took a bit of paint off there to, I wanted to soften on the edge there, which is less visually important. But I also wanted to add it a more, you know, just a more bold mark and bring the underpainting. There's a lot of subtle colours, like I said, in the underpainting. Just want to bring some of them in. Half smear to create beautiful abstraction. Trying to get a feel for what I'm going for here. There's all sorts of colours in that granite rock, so I'm just putting them in. It's got that beautiful lichen moss, like I said. All sorts of random colours in it. A bit of an orange version over here. 
อย่างเงี้ยใช่นี่แล้วโอเคผมฟังเหตุการณ์ที่จะตัดของนั้นออกไปแล้วผมอาจจะเปลี่ยนมันออกไปแล้วนี่ไงเนี่ยโอเคแสดงว่าจะเป็นที่ปลายของการตัดของนั้นที่จบที่สุดที่จะเริ่มต้นที่นี่ที่นี่ที่นDone a fair bit of work. I reckon what we'll do is she's pretty close to done. Let's come in and have a look around. Let's see what we've done. Okay, well you can see what we've got here, what we've been working with. I'll just give you a slightly better view of it. Smoke haze dominant. Beautiful landscape though. There's plenty of distance in there. It's a fantastic, fantastic hill to paint from. This one in clear weather or uh, hazy weather, like today. Okay, now here we go. Now, if you have a look, I've uh, got the buildings. It really gives the illusion of detail. It's something refined in an abstract-ish painting. Right up close, I've really gone for strong colour and thick paint. Those beautiful rainbow half-mixed colours to really bring out the subtlety in the rocks. And also, just in general, the distance I've painted quite thin. Because I really want that to recede off, and you can see I've done long lateral strokes and very thin paint, contrasted by the foreground paint, which is, well, to say the least, I'd say it's chunky style. Some of the paint is incredibly thick in here, but I really, really want to give that feeling. I love the feeling of thick paint, contrast. Anything in a painting is interesting when it's contrasting, light against dark, warm against cool colours, thick against thin paint. There you go. There's a good example of some real chunky stuff. Everything is suggested. So up close, it's all about paint. Rather than rather than being about a realistic picture, up close, it's about paint. Hopefully, when you get back, it becomes about realism. That's the technique I strive for. Right. Well, what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll have a look at some of the colours. And that was white and yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, burnt sienna. And uh, a couple of the others. And what we got here, we had the first. We'll just come through and check out the colours. Now half mixed. You can see those rainbow effects. And that was ultramarine blue, magenta, and viridian green. Can't get enough of that subject. I could look at that all day. Especially in the haze, you can see all sorts of things. The harder you look, you see. Different things off in the distance. Well, there you go. That's about it. But just as I was about to pack up, a few of these clouds started to roll into the subject, and I thought, well, that's great. I reckon I'll add that in because that just adds a little bit more interest to the sky itself, just to bring up a bit more of that uh, that lovely smoke effect. Those clouds really help to 
emphasise those warm and cool shadows that you get with the snow cave. I feel like I've achieved that, so I'm pretty happy with that setup. One other small detail I did was get the rigger brush out, which is a very fine head brush, and uh, put some very refined marks in the branches just to really finish the tree off so you've got that massive contrast between abstract shapes and refinement. I feel like this is a great way again to get contrast and also a great way to give the illusion of realism. So as you recede back, from, or get back from the painting and check it out, hopefully it all comes together. All right, well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed all that. And uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and forward it on to your friends and all the good stuff. Until next time, I'll see you down the road.